two Trithuis in one place? <laughs> who's, <laughs> who's minding the store? Well, well, Kevin, this is the winter of everybody's discontent. Yeah. You know, this, the fuel bills are uh, crazy, and so we thought we'd take a few minutes just to go over some issues around the building, mostly about the sh shelter side of the building. Okay. So our lesson starts with, in a typical house like this, there's a couple of acts of physics, some, some laws of physics that come into play. Okay. One is that heated air wants to rise. So no matter how you deliver heat into the building, it wants to move its way upwards. You know that a hot air balloon will lift, and that's the same thing that happens inside the house. It'll also be directly driven by the temperature difference between inside and outside. If it's zero degrees outside and 70 degrees inside, it's going to fight like crazy to go up through the building. The other thing is that it's going to try to go towards cold in any direction. So if it's heated here and cold here, it's going to go this way. This is our sort of model. So in typical wood frame construction, we have to think about how do we put a hat on this building. That's so, the first place you guys think about. Absolutely. It. Get a hat on the building, get that airtight and insulated as best as possible. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in typical Joyce construction right here, we've seen fiberglass, bad insulation. And in an ideal world, there'd be perfectly installed insulation in between every single joist. Perfect. Except that's not what happens. <laughs> you know, sometimes you look up there and you you see that. Ten years ago, somebody came up to add a bathroom fan, and they pulled the insulation up, and it's sitting like this. Hmm. So you? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to admit to anything. So but. it starts with an inspection. Get up the top of the attic stairs and look inside and just say, if this was a boat and this was upside down in the water, would this house sink? Would this boat sink? So it means close inspection to insulate really well. You also can look at other ways to do it. There's all kinds of tools nowadays. This rigid foam like this that we could cut to fit in between the joists, even on top of the fiberglass insulation, so you could still put a deck here. And they also make this bubble pack insulation, right? You can't insulate enough. And in this case, when we think about the hat, the roof, it is okay to insulate the floor of the attic because that serves as the effective top of the house. Well, it's not the best place. Right. It's not the best place, meaning uh, if you insulate here, and then many people have their HVAC system sitting right above it. Right, so now well, think that's, about that. It couldn't be in a worse place. Couldn't be in a worse place. In the summer, it's the worst place for air conditioning. In the winter, it's the worst place for heating. So what I'd love to see, if, if we could, if we could change the world locally, in cold climates, we would actually insulate here to make a beautiful hat over the top of the building. And that means that this space right here is now going to have the conditioned right. air. Right. So here's a thermal imaging camera looking at the roof. And what you're looking at is surface temperature. And if you look at the greens and the blues, those are actually good. That means that heat is being resisted to actually coming out of the building. And you can see what they did here is they actually insulated the roof rafters. So all the red, it means the heat's coming out of the gable, which isn't good, but at least we know the roof has been done properly. Right. That's right. We can verify the roof has been done properly. The gable wall still right. needs to be insulated. And you right. can see that there's an old gable vent there that was sealed up but it's a serious air leak coming right through the attic okay. space. And that's that point about heat going to cold. It'll go this way through the sidewall too. Right. The other thing is air leakage. A lot of people don't understand the difference between insulating and air sealing. Yeah, I mean, it's a key point because, I mean, this stuff is good, but we know air will move through this. Exactly. And to your dad's point, if it's out of the way, air is definitely going to move through those don't gaps. Don't forget the ceiling lights up here in the second floor bedroom. Right? There's all sorts of holes and ducts. Right. It's vitally important. Every one of those recessed cans, the ductwork, all that has to be sealed so that you can create an air barrier at the ceiling plane and prevent it from coming up to the building. And this is DIY friendly, right? You can get up there, you can seal up all the gaps and cracks around every penetration in that ceiling plane, and you can re-insulate with fiberglass right. you know, or rigid right. board. Sounds like I'm going right. up to my attic. That's right. The other thing is windows. So this is a double hung window. You can see it is leaky. It has a meeting rail right here that's a gap. Most people don't understand, if I had a quarter inch gap mm -hmm. across that entire meeting rail right there, that would be equal to the area of a hole this Ooh, big inside your that? house. So that puts it in the context. If you saw that, you, of course you'd seal it up, right? Get my duct tape out. And That's right. <laughs> so what can you do? One, you could uh, install sash locks, mm -hmm. right? So you can tighten this upper sash or lower sash and tighten the gap. I don't think people realize that the lock does more than secure the window. It I actually it pulls it right. together. Right. And this right here is a thermal image of a window. And you can see the purple and the black right here and right here, that represents the air leakage. That's actually the cold air infiltrating, getting in through the meeting rail and the gap between the upper and the lower. Keep your camera away from my house. That's now. your hard earned money going out the door. But there's other way to do it too. You can install a shrink wrap kit, right? Yeah. So the shrink kits go up and over the window like this. They have double sided tape that secures the shrink wrap there. And then you can use a heat gun, you know, and, uh, and seal it up nice and tight. Kind of like an interior storm window. Right. Put it up at the beginning of the heating right. season, take it down at the, the end of the air is a really good insulator. 
insulated if you can trap it and hold it into that place. Yeah, gotcha. You think the windows are bad? You think the windows <laughs> are bad? I thought the windows were bad. <laughs> that door right here. Now, if you can see underneath a door, if yeah. you could see a gap that's like that thick, half an inch, and that's not unusual, this is the equivalent you're going to see. Heaven, so that means hole. the boat would sink. Okay, so you should at least case put some sort of door suite. There's a million of these in the in the aisle at the home center. You know, just a million different styles. There's all sorts of. Th this one ways. actually gets affixed to the bottom of the door. Yeah. So as the door so opens and closes, and close. it's right. good. Right. Yeah. If, if you can't get one of those, you can't figure out the right ones. At least get something for the winter just to block that cold air. You gotta think that keep that from leaking out through the building. Heat will go to cold air. Same thing with the door, right? And so you can see the door right here, the black and the purple around the bottom seal, that's where the door leaks the most, right here. And you can see all that cold air coming in right along that gasket. Okay, all right. Another thing that people don't realize is electrical outlets, receptacles. So if you take this cover plate off, there's always a gap between the actual electrical box and the sheetrock. Yeah. Mm. It's never gonna be perfect. And if you look at an exterior wall, you might see fiberglass like this. And of course, they're not gonna seal up nice and tight. I mean, this right. is just for demonstration. This purposes. is really well done. That, you know, a lot of times you see this. Right. Where it's missing yeah. altogether. So if any of the cold air from outside is getting into this wall, it's not gonna wanna get out of the wall into your space right. through that outlet. Right. That's right. So, I mean, if you look at it, here's again, thermal imaging camera, look at the electrical outlet, look how leaky it is, right? Oh yeah. So you're so. not gonna be able to get in there and add more fiberglass insulation. So at the least case. Just use some caulking and seal around that just opening. Go and yeah. you seal up the gap between the sheetrock and the, and the junction box. Just to be clear, you're not asking me to seal the gap between the actual outlet and the box. No, no, no. You're asking me to seal the box and the drywall. And you're trying to seal, just like those window kits, you're trying to seal the air to let the air be the insulator. You don't really want to fill that with foam inside that whole space. Okay. You get the house tight, you air seal it, you, you, you hunker down, and people are going to end up using clock thermostats and turn the heat back, and that's okay. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, right? Correct. It's going to save some energy, but there's also some cautions we got to put out, and that is that there are parts of the building now, if you're not going to heat this wing of the building, there are pipes that may be in peril and they can freeze in cold climates. So gotcha. pipe insulation is really important. You may have to actually drain down some of that piping if you've got a wing that you're not going to use or you've got a baseboard. We see issues with people having a wood stove in where the thermostat is and all of a sudden the baseboard freezes in the other part of the building. So you've got to think about it. You know? okay. Another thing about furniture placement and making sure that your heating meters are not blocked. Right? Make sure those, the furnace vents, make sure your radiators, make sure that's actually giving, giving heat to the room. Yeah. And hopefully we can be more comfortable and save yeah. a couple bucks for the winter. Spring is coming. <laughs> Good yeah. information, yeah. guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.